this is um, this is wonderful. I'm Dallas Allen. I'm the producer of the Kerrville Folk Festival, and I'm here with you at the Kerrville Folk Festival, our thirty uh, seventh. And you, we are backstage in the green room at 2008 Kerrville Folk Festival, and we are delighted to have this wonderful production. We are now made it through to day 18, and you day look, 18. You look like you're holding up wonderful for it, and uh, we have had a tremendous festival. We definitely applaud you on all your efforts, and couldn't have had better weather and better yeah. things that you had no control over, that, as far as we know. And, uh, yeah, right. And yeah, it was it was absolutely wonderful, and the lineup was tremendous. We've been able to interview quite a few of the main performers, and our main theme of the interviews have been what happens out in the campground, and which kind of leads me to what brought you to the Kerrville Folk Festival. Oh, you really want to go back that far? <laughs> <laughs> well, I came to the very first Kerrville Folk Festival in 1972 when it was still in town, in the auditorium. And I was a program council, ran the coffee house for the program council at the University of Houston. And I hosted some artists like Alan Damron and Ray Wally Hubbard and a, and a whole list of others for a conference. And uh, they brought it up that it was getting ready to happen. And so I came and volunteered and stayed volunteering for decades. And uh, then I became a part-time, and then I became full-time, and then when Rod retired, I became the producer. That's the short version. Well, that's, that's, very, <laughs> not, that's very good. Um, there's been a lot of improvements over the past few years in particular. Um, what do you think has been one of the most special things that you've seen happen out here? The Natural Building Colloquium, uh, for the most recent, uh, because... Uh, these folks, several hundred folks, came out here and uh, rebuilt structures and built new structures out of um, the natural resources we've been given uh, because this festival is held on a 50-acre ranch, which is a permanent facility for this event. And there is um, there's so much that we can do with the earth that we've been given besides have the festival and play music here, which is extremely special. Um, it's to use the gifts that we've been given of the land and make, um, the, make the buildings and the things that we have for the festival comfortable uh, by using straw bale and cob and we rebuilt, rebuilt Chapel Hill where we have services and I um, can't even begin to tell you how many people have been married there and um, the people that have passed on that we remember there and uh, so there's been a lot of changes in many ways, but I think for me, currently, that's the most special. That's great. That it really has been some unbelievable changes that have happened. Uh, again, most of them just recently. It was it has gone to almost modern day. Uh, it's from from just pure hippies on the ground to you know well developed RV park and showers and everything that's you know very different. What can you uh, what would you see foresee happening in the next 38 years? Well, I know that if we uh, complete the process of becoming a, a part of a foundation, there will be a lot of um, people who will be able to um, donate to projects that they would like to see, like we could finish the, the uh, staff showers, and I'd like to see uh, cabins for the kids camp that we do and an artist in residence program and there's just a whole lot of directions that we would really love to go in the programming as well as as continuing to build and rebuild the structures to make them much more accessible and comfortable and uh, um, and uh, who knows I mean we may have more events we right now have two main events which is the Kerrville Folk Festival and the Kerrville Wine and Music Festival um, and then the kids camp and, and, and other smaller events that use the facilities. But who knows, maybe we'll be doing uh, more festivals even. It, you know, it's wide open door. Definitely. Yeah, it's, again, one of our favorite doors. I've asked a lot of people, uh, there's been a lot of magic that happens out on the ranch. What do you think is the most magical thing that you've ever seen out on the campgrounds? That's not something I can even, I can't even, I've been here for decades. There's not really anything that um, that 
I could bring it around to. And, I, and also I think that even though a lot of people find the campgrounds magical, I find the whole thing magical. The fact that the campgrounds wouldn't exist if we didn't have the main stage and the ticket buyers and the people that come to camp and the day ticket people and the volunteers and it's just um, none, no one part of this formula could exist without the other. And I guess that's the magic is that there's this many people that can come together for this long and kind of become a city and still maintain the magic and the respect and the love and um, the welcoming atmosphere that we have here. And we've been doing it for 37 years and um, it's six, eight hundred volunteers plus the staff and all the boards and all the ticket buyers and they all coexist. Um, for that long out camping <laughs> in the heat and sometimes the rain and uh, still just maintain the the love and the, the um, it's about the music you know even you know whether it's campgrounds or whether it's programmed uh, it's it's about the music and, and music always affects people uh, whether you're listening to the radio or um, listening to live music it's always um, uh, an important part of people's lives and, and it uh, changes their lives. Well you've changed many people's lives and we surely appreciate your dedication to it and uh, your foresight to see how things could go and how things can be this way always. So yeah. We sure appreciate you well, and love you. it very much. Thank you. Cheers. Alright. Woohoo!